Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to start with uh, kinematics. We'll do an introduction towards, uh, you know, what the key terms are uh, in, in the subject of kinematics. Uh, and then in the following videos, we're gonna cover things like how to uh, use graphs uh, to uh, further study kinematics. So let's begin. So kinematics is the study of motion. It basically describes how do objects behave when they are in motion. Uh, obviously movement is a part of everyday experience, so it's important to be able to analyze and predict the way in which objects move. Now we can study this behavior of the study of motion in two ways. One of them is uh, graphically, so we can plot uh, how a position or a velocity of an object changes over time. And then we can also do the same through mathematical equations, uh, which describe, uh, or, or more colloquially, you know, they're known as equations of motion. So let's get right into it and begin by defining some key terms. So the motion of objects can be described in terms of quantities such as position or speed or velocity or acceleration. I think distance is a pretty self-explanatory term. Um, so I won't get into the definition of that, but uh, displacement uh, we have covered in a previous chapter when we were looking at scalars and uh, vectors, um, but it's essentially distance uh, from uh, some kind of a reference point in a specified direction. So that's what the difference is between uh, distance and displacement because displacement, it will be in a specified direction. And displacement, as we talked about it, is a vector quantity, and distance is a scalar quantity. So this should not be anything new information to you. The vector quantity uh, displacement has both magnitude and direction. What is speed? Well, I think, again, very straightforward. It can be distance uh, traveled per uh, some kind of unit time. Uh, speed is a scalar quantity, just a reminder. Uh, and uh, essentially, you know, it refers to the total distance that's traveled. Then you have velocity. So velocity is basically going to be displacement upon time. So one of them is distance upon time, which is speed, and velocity is displacement upon time. And velocity is, as you guessed it, it's a vector term. Finally, you have acceleration, and it's something we will cover in this chapter. Uh, so it is the rate of change of velocity. So if something is traveling at a certain velocity and the velocity keeps increasing or it keeps decreasing, um, you have to understand how fast the velocity is increasing uh, or how fast it's decreasing. So the rate of change per unit time, how much velocity change in a given amount of time, that is acceleration. And because we have velocity in the mix here, uh, acceleration is, you guessed it, a vector term. It is in a specified direction in which the body is traveling. Uh, An acceleration in the opposite direction to which a body is traveling will decrease its velocity. An acceleration at a 90 degree angle to which a body is traveling will change the direction of the velocity, but it will not change the magnitude of the velocity. This last topic that I've covered don't worry, you don't need to write anything down right now. We will be covering that in a subsequent video towards the end of chapter three. So let's have a look at uh, some equations uh, that uh, can be used to describe uh, these, uh, these parameters. So generally, velocity will be written with the small uh, letter V and uh, acceleration will be written with the small letter, uh, letter A. So we just said that velocity is the change in displacement. So we use a delta symbol to say change in. So delta S means change in displacement over some delta T, some change in time. Um, so I'm gonna write this explicitly here. Delta means change in something. It's change in something, so whatever that, that's why the dot, sorry, dot, dot, dot is there. Uh, so in this case, delta S is the change in displacement when you, that was covered over time delta t. So when you divide delta s by delta t, you get v. Similarly, we can write acceleration as a change in velocity 
over the change in time that was covered. So that gets us equations for V and A. Now let's also consider what the units for these guys would be. And let me use a different color for this so you can see it clearly. But if velocity is the change in displacement divided by, by the change in time, the units on this would quite simply be meters second minus one, meters per second, how many meters per second were traveled. Now, if acceleration is the change in velocity, that would basically get you meters per second minus one over some change in time, another per second minus one. So that simply works out to be meters per second square. Some people like to say it as meters per second per second. That is also correct. Let us work through some examples to illustrate these concepts. So say you have a circular track. Let's say it's something, you know, kids uh, run their cars on. So it's a circular track uh, of uh, 2.4 meters. And uh, a car travels around this track in uh, time to cover track uh, is 4.8 seconds. So in the entire, it takes 4.8 seconds to cover 2.4 meters. So in a case like this, we can see that the speed is quite simply, you know, 2.4 meters divided by 4.8 seconds. I'm writing uh, the units because it's always good to write it just to get a rationality check. So when you divide this, you see 0.5 meters per second. That's the speed. Now, if I were to say to you, what is the velocity here? Well, remember velocity, it's a circular track. It's ending up in the same place that it started in one, in one, uh, in one uh, rotation, in one revolution, excuse me. So the average velocity, uh, and I will write it as average velocity, average velocity will be zero meters because the displacement is zero divided by 4.8 seconds. So it's simply zero meters per second. Let's work through another example. So let's have a look at one more example. So let's say there's a straight track as denoted by this yellow line and I'll explain what the dotted red line is, but let's say there's a straight track and a car is going from position zero along to uh, position 840 meters at a speed of 35 meters per second. At this point, the driver hits the brakes on the car, and in about seven more seconds, you know, um, the uh, car comes to rest at uh, point X. So it has come to rest, it has stopped at this point. So let's, first of all, try and figure out how long the car was traveling at that constant speed of 35 meters per second. So in a case like that, what do we need to do? Well, we know the velocity already. Uh, let's write the velocity equation. It's velocity is uh, velocity is the change in dis uh, displacement divided by, sorry, I should write that as an S, change in uh, displacement divided by the change in time. So if you rearrange this equation, you would simply get delta T is delta S divided by the velocity. Now the change in displacement is 840 meters, as you can see in that first portion. We're only doing the first portion of uh, this journey and 840 divided by about 35 meters. If you do the math on uh, meters per second, so this is meters, this is meters second minus one, and here's where writing the units helps a lot because you can see that meters and meters will cancel out and seconds will go from the bottom to the top. So this is simply 24 seconds. It took 24 seconds for it to travel from 0 0.0, 0 0.840. So now the question becomes, when we were hitting the brakes at the 840 meter mark, what was the acceleration that was applied to this car? So let's work that out. So when we write out the formula for acceleration, recall that acceleration is equal to the um, change in velocity divided by the, um, the change in time. So we know that the change in velocity, we went from 35 down to zero. So it's better to write it like this. What was it at the end? It was zero. 
and subtract from it, what was it at the beginning? It was 35. And then you change, uh, what is the change in time? Well, we can see here from the diagram that it's seven seconds. So this is negative 35. And I'll introduce the units now. Meters second minus one divided by seven seconds. So at this point, it's pretty clear that the acceleration is negative five meters second raised to the second negative power. Essentially, what we're saying is the minus sign is showing that the velocity has decreased rather than e increased. This, by the way, the term, the technical term for that is deceleration. Acceleration is uh, something that increases the speed. Deceleration is something that decreases the speed. You can still say acceleration is minus five meters per second squared. That is completely accurate to say. Um, one thing I will note, and I did not do here, is you are better off writing this as 5.0 meters per second. The reason for that is you've been seeing the numbers that you have here are good to two significant figures. So the answer should also be recorded to two significant figures. Just a minor programming note there for you. So that brings us to the end of this video. In our next video, we're going to talk about uh, using graphical methods to represent distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. See you in the next video.